Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the aim of the game is to find the most obscure answer possible. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, my name's Manny, this is my best friend Asia, and we're from Birmingham. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Reg, this is my brother Eddie, he's from Chippenham and I'm from Bristol. Couple number three. Hi, my name is Rachel, this is my partner Paddy and we live in South West London. And finally, couple number four. My name's Adam, this is my friend Lewis and we're from South London. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> there we are, thank you very much, each and every one of you. Lovely to have you with us, uh, very warm welcome to Pointless. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. They call him the postman. Not because he always delivers, but because he does absolutely nothing on Sundays. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Now, what a roller coaster show oh. our returning pairs had last time. Lewis and Adam there on podium four. Uh, we started off with Adam. He got a pointless answer. Lovely way to start the show. And then they got knocked out in round one because of Lewis's answer. It wasn't a particularly high answer. It was just a very, very impressive round one, wasn't it? And uh, Asio and Manny got through that round one. Very, very smartly. And then they joined the 200 Club in uh, round two. Unbelievable. So, unbelievable. unbelievable. Welcome to our new pairs. I have some information for our new pairs, which is the last eight shows in a row, the last eight shows in a row have been won by new pairs. So a returning pair has not won for a long time. We've got two very smart returning pairs here, but can we make that nine in a row? Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, well, now, Catherine and Lisa, newcomers to the show, though they were, failed to win the jackpot last time, which means we add another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot starts off at a very respectable £4,500. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. Just remember, as ever, it will be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so you know what you have to do. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is love songs. Now, that's nice. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... UK number one hits with love in their titles. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you seven UK number one hits on the first board, seven on the second board. They each have love in their titles. We'll show you the year they were number one. You just need to tell us the artist who had a number one hit with these, please. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our first board of seven hits, and here they are. We have got Love Yourself, 2015. I Just Called to Say I Love You, 1984. Saving All My Love for You, 1985. Long Live Love, 1965. All You Need Is Love, 1967. I Feel Love, 1977, and Bleeding Love, 2007. I'll read those all again. Love Yourself, I Just Called to Say I Love You, Saving All My Love for You, Long Live Love, All You Need Is Love, I Feel Love, and Bleeding Love. There we are. Asia, welcome back. Good to have you with us. Ooh, first podium. Oh, it's nice over there on the fourth podium. It was. First podium. Oh, it's all a bit immediate, isn't it? Uh, remind us all about yourself. Uh, I study classics at university, do comedy, dabbling in a bit of everything. Um, so, yes, a bit of stand-up? Yes, yeah. How, what's the longest stand-up you've done? Uh, how how long is your set? Uh, just over ten minutes. I'm still See, a baby. That's quite nice. That's nice. You, yeah. so you've, and there are some open spots so that you can go into. Yeah, to... and, like, with my society at uni. Very good. OK, now, Asia, what are you going to go for? I know the bottom one, but I don't, can't remember it right now. But I do know the top one. So I'm going to go with Love Yourself, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber says, Asia, let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Asia. It is indeed Justin Bieber. And down that goes to 16. Not bad at all. Great start to the round. 16. Well played, Asia. Yeah, it was number one in uh, 2015. It went back to number one in 2016. When it went back to number one in 2016, he was number one, two and three in the singles charts, Justin Bieber. That was that time when he became weirdly mm. like, massive mm. for a few months. He released like an amazing album, properly good songs, uh, but he was, uh, he was huge for a bit. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Reg. Welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Reg. Um, I'm an independent card and gift agent. I sell greets cards and stationery to the card and gift um, area in the southwest, Devon and Cornwall, that kind of area. I work with small companies that can't afford 
to put a full time guy on the road. So See, I do that's them. nice. Yeah, it is. So yeah. they're genuinely nice card and gifts. Yeah, really or, nice stuff. I've done it 35 years. Very nice. I went to one the other day to try and find a birthday card for someone, and every single one was. I mean, you know, I, I like a, I like a rude joke. Mm -hmm. But every single card I picked up I went, oh, oh, oh dear. Yeah, that's. They me. were quite a bit <laughs> off colour. They were a bit off colour. Is this is this you? Is it? Oh yeah, that's me. Okay. I'm to blame for all of that. Well, most of it. Okay. Um, what else do you get up to? Um, I also play in a touring punk tribute band. Of course you do. My spare time. Good. Um, what do you got, play? I'm um, guitar and singing. Um, we just got back from two weeks in Australia and New Zealand, which was fun. That's a big tour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got, got a following over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you wear on stage, Reg? This. <laughs> and, and this is actually... And trousers? Uh, no, but... Black, Those trousers, black, just nice. us. And okay. this, is, this is actually my stage shirt. Who are you a tribute shirt. to? Clash. I was going to say, you look like you're in yeah. the clash today. Yeah. yeah, this is my gig shirt. It's my best shirt. So I it's a great, it's a great shirt. What do you call yourself? London Calling. Of course. Nice. Of course. We're touring the album this year, funny enough, because it's 40 years. Very good. This is our thing, which is why they wanted us in Australia, because they thought it would be a nice thing. And we did New Zealand as well. Amazing. And while we gigged in New Zealand, I bumped to an, into a housemate of mine I haven't seen since 1990. He just happened to come to one of the shows. Didn't know I was in the band. So wow. I haven't seen for 30 years, so that was kind what of random. That? How extraordinary. Now, Reg, uh, what are you going to go for? Who had hits with these love songs? I'm going to go for I Feel Love, Donna Summer. Donna Summer says, Reg, let's see how many of our 100 people said Donna Summer. It's not bad, 25. 25 for Donna Summer. Yeah, well played. When she toured uh, Australia, Donna Summer, she had to change her name to Donna Winter. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Donna Winter coat. Yeah, exactly. It. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Rachel, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. So I uh, look after the media and communications for our Global Motorsport Championship, and I also look after the PR for a couple of racing drivers. Oh, that's a flashy thing to be doing. <laughs> well, how exciting. Um, and I mean, that takes you everywhere, presumably. It does, yeah. I just got back from Japan. Um, I'm, I'm going to China next month and then Bahrain after that. So I do get to travel a lot, which is nice. Why are you travelling almost as much as Reg with his band? <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, Rachel, what are you going to go for on our board here? Um, so the ones I knew have already gone and I think I know the bottom one, but I'm not 100%, so it's a bit of a risk. But I'm hoping that it's Leona Lewis. Leona Lewis says, Rachel, let's see how many of our 100 people said Leona Lewis for Bleeding Love. <laughs> 40 for Leona Lewis. Yeah, second single and second number one for Leona Lewis, Bleeding Love. Never sure about that as a title. No, I wasn't sure about that as a title. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's the sort of thing, if you say it in a Cockney accent, it sounds terrible. Yes, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, right, Lewis. Welcome back. Good to have you here again. Tell us all about yourself one more time. So I'm a musician, um, saxophonist, mainly um, sing and play. Do you play? Do you have a favourite saxophone? Do you have a soprano or um, an alto or a tenor? Tenor's my favourite yeah. one, um, but I play baritone and alto quite interchangeably. So. That's good. But do you, do you play keyboards as well? Mm, no, a little, a little bit. It's to mainly like win. Make music. So. Make music. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, but mainly a session musician. Do you have a, do you have a band as well? Um, of, uh... One of my main projects is um, the House Gospel Choir, which mixes house music with gospel music. I already love the sound of that. That sounds fantastic. Now, Lewis, this should be. I'm hoping this is a sort of home, home subject for you. I, I know most of them. Um, I just called to say I love you is Stevie Wonder. Saving all my love for you is Whitney Houston. All you need is love is the Beatles. Out of those three, I'm going to go for Whitney Houston. OK, Whitney Houston for saving all my love for you. Let's see how many of our 100 people also said Whitney Houston. It's right. That down, it goes to 29. That's quite surprisingly low, I feel. Uh, but, but well done. Joe's well. Yeah, best answer are the ones you knew there, Lewis. Very well played. Uh, first uh, hit, first number one, and first UK top 40 hit, Saving All My Love For You. Um, I just called to say I Love You. It's also the first solo number one for Stevie Wonder. It's his worst song as well, but the one he's most famous song. song. I know. He's got, I mean, literally, his back catalogue is filled with some of the greatest songs ever written. And that's the one we know him for. 52 for that. You're right about the Beatles. All You Need Is Love. It's a big scorer. 75. 
And the best answer on the board, this last one, Long Live Love. I think it's... Is it Sandy Shaw? It is Sandy it's, Shaw. Yeah. Very well done. Ten points. Well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed. Halfway through the round. Before we come back down the line, let's just remind ourselves that Asya, uh, you are the low scorer there on 16. And, um, yes, Rachel and Paddy, the high scorers. So, yes, good luck with that, Paddy. Uh, you're going to have to dig deep on this next pass. Good luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So let's put seven more love songs up on the board, and here they are. We've got Secret Love, 1954, I'm Not in Love, 1975, Under the Moon of Love, 1976, Tainted Love, 1981, I'd Do Anything for Love, but I Won't Do That, 1993, Love Don't Cost a Thing, 2001, and Tell Laura I Love Her, 1960. I'll read those again for you. Secret Love, I'm Not in Love, Under the Moon of Love, Tainted Love, I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that. Love don't cost a thing, and tell Laura I love her. There we are. Adam, welcome back. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Adam. Uh, like Lewis, I'm a musician as well, uh, so I play piano and drums and a bit of guitar and singing as well. You play it all. You play absolutely yeah. all of it. <laughs> in terms of the front the line, you've got the whole thing. Um, but as a session musician, you're booked in all, uh, holding yeah, all of those. Yeah, session music is most commonly with piano. OK. Um, that's kind of my old, like, first instrument, so, but... And as a, as a session music, I mean, this, I love the, the, the old sort of jazz session musicians basically would know all the standards. You'd know all the, all the, all the charts, as it were. You'd have them all here. And basically, if, uh, if someone comes on stage, they just make a little symbol with their fingers. So if it's three fingers down, it's three flats. <laughs> if it's three fingers up, it's three sharps. And basically, they just do that. And they say, OK, polka dots and moonbeams with their hand like that. And basically, the, the, the band behind just would take that as their, OK, there's the tempo, that's the key we're in, here we go. I mean, I normally just yell, what key are we doing? <laughs> OK, fair enough. <laughs> that's the music. But I just love that idea that everybody knows it, and they've got it all there, and they can just take it from there. I'll anyway, have to now, introduce that. I think you should. Um, Adam, you're on 29. At this early stage, if you can score 10 or less, you're into the next round. Going to struggle to do that. It's quite a difficult one for me. There's one, but I'm really not, not sure about it. Um, I'm going to have to go for probably quite an obvious one, uh, Soft Cell for Tainted Love. OK, Soft Cell. Let's see if that is right. Here is your red line coming in. It's quite low, but don't be put off by that. Let's see how many of our 100 said Soft Cell. Yeah, I think that's good enough. 46 takes your total up to 75. Yeah, biggest selling single of uh, 1981 still there, uh, still stands up today as well. Cover of an old Northern Soul classic by uh, Gloria Jones. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Paddy, welcome. Hi. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Paddy. Uh, so, I work in the city for one of the big financial accounting firms, working on the assurance side of the business, so looking after big, uh, big deals between banks and, uh, and the originators of finance products. OK, I understood the word product over that, I think. <laughs> uh, I was really worried about this bit, because there's no simple way of explaining it. No, no, it's fine. I work I think, in finance. So there'll be some people going, oh, interesting, that's, that's what Paddy does. That's, I think Compared that's what I Rachel, do. Compared to it's just not. Uh, um, <laughs> what, and for fun? Uh, fun, I like to play sport a lot, um, more social, socially now than, than previously. Um, but a lot of golf, a lot of casual hockey still uh, in South West London. Casual hockey, OK, now, yep. there you are, on 40. If you can score 34 or less... There's a place for you in the next round. I mean, I think when this subject came up, it was an absolute nightmare subject for both of us. Um, soft sell is, has gone, and I would have got that wrong anyway. <laughs> so the only one I know is I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that, and that's Meatloaf. Meatloaf says, Paddy, here is your red line. Can you get below or close to that with Meatloaf? Let's find out. That's right. Down it goes to 63, taking your total up to 103. Yeah, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. It's a song about unloading the dishwasher. <laughs> yes. yes. That's where he drew the line yes. with Mrs Meatloaf. I have... I'm going to confess this now. OK. I have sometimes put my, opened the dishwasher and gone, <gasps> horrible wave of hot air, and you think, oh, no, it's clean, it's full of clean things. Yeah. Quietly push the little flippy lid back down. Closed Shut it. the door. Walked out of the kitchen. Walked off. <laughs> see, it's when you wear glasses, you really notice that. <gasps> when you open yeah. the dishwasher, no. you, can't, you, you can't see anything for no. a minute and a half. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now then, Eddie, welcome to the show. Tell us all about yourself. I work as an engineering manager for a large aerospace company. 
So I run teams that do crypto security, electromagnetics, uh, system architectures, <laughs> performance modeling. Whoa. Um, well, just walk around as if, as if Paddy didn't feel bad enough already about his job. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> we got this. In your head as you stride around, can you hear? <laughs> yeah, effectively, all I do is play with spreadsheets. Actually, Reg could probably do that, but he could walk behind you. <laughs> it's been known to happen. With a little, <laughs> little portable amp. Yeah, wow, yeah. crypto security. Yeah, that's amazing. That is cool. It is. I mean, no idea what it is, but it sounds <laughs> it's great. Cool. Uh, what are you going to go for, Eddie? Well, I think I'm going to go for... I'm not in love, and I think 10cc. 10cc, says Eddie. Let's see if that's right. Here is your red line. Can you get below that? It is 10cc. You are through to round two. 37, taking your total up to 62. Uh, very well played, Safety Through. It's a great song, isn't it? I'm not in love. 10 cc. Yeah. Oh. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Manny, welcome back. Lovely to have you with us again. Uh, we had to say goodbye to you in round two last yeah. time. So we've got to be hoping to take a little bit further this time. Remind us all about yourself. Um, so I'm currently a student at the University of Edinburgh studying Spanish and history, and it's a good time. <laughs> Do you know, I think Edinburgh is my favourite city in the world. I've thought about this long and hard, and I think it is. It's I think really nice. It's just lovely. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I know Florence is lovely. <laughs> I know, and I dare say there are all kinds of other wonderful Paris, Rome, lovely places. They're not Edinburgh. No, we're the Athens of the North, but oh, who I think needs Athens, Athens when you've just got Edinburgh? West. Exactly. <laughs> you out Athens, Athens. <laughs> um, are you in the new town? Are you in the old town? Um, I am currently in the old town, but last year I used to live in Newtown, so I've got a nice mix of the two. Oh, yeah, it's quite nice. Love it. Love <laughs> Edinburgh. Um, OK, uh, now, Manny, you're on 16. This is amazing. 86 or less gets you into the next round. 16 is amazing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> um, the last board was really nice. This one is not so nice. Um, Steady. Boards have feelings. <laughs> Damn it, sorry. Um, I honestly don't know any of them, so I think I'll have to guess. Let's go with Secret Love. Elvis Presley. OK, Elvis Presley. Let's see. Elvis Presley. There's your line. Oh, it's nice and high. What happens when we say Elvis Presley? Oh, I'm sorry, Manny. I'm sorry, I'm afraid that's 100, and that takes your total up to 116. Yeah, you are not left with much there, and these are perfectly good guests for that era. Uh, but Secret Love was Doris Day. She would have scored you 13 points. Um, Under the Moon of Love, we do remember, I don't see why. Sure, Waddy sure, Waddy. Waddy, Waddy, of yeah. course. That would have scored 28. Uh, Love Don't Cost a Thing is J-Lo, Jennifer okay, Lopez. Good. It's her first uh, UK number one, 21 points for that. And Tell Laura oh, I Love Her. There's Ricky Valance. Ricky Valance, another tough one. That would have scored seven. That's the best answer on the board. Thank you very much indeed. OK, we find ourselves at the end of our first round. We have to say goodbye to our first pair, Manny and Asia. I'm so sorry. I was really thinking the stage was set after that particularly lovely low score from you, Asia for you just to waltz through to the head-to-head -head and beyond. But uh, this is where we have to say goodbye. Thank you so much for playing. Manny and Asya. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> there we are, down to three pairs. Very well done, Reg and Eddie. Our low score is in round one. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Kings and Queens. Can you all decide in your pairs who wants to go first, who wants to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Monarchs through the centuries. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any king or queen of England or Great Britain and uh, United Kingdom who reigned in any of these centuries, please. Thank you very much indeed. So, as Richard just mentioned, we're going to put five centuries up on the board. You just have to name anyone who ruled during one of those centuries. Let's see which centuries we have got. 1100 to 1199, 1300 to 1399, 1500 to 1599, 1700 to 1799, 1900 to 1999. There you go. Five centuries. Reg. Ooh. <laughs> um, you I'm don't gonna... have to say which century you're speaking about, in fact. You can just throw out the name of a monarch and we'll do the rest. I'm going to go with Charles I. 
Charles I says Reg. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Charles I. Oh, sorry, Reg, not Charles I. Scores you 100 points. Sorry, 1625 to 1649, Charles I. That's pesky, isn't it? Mm, that's pesky. But do you know what? I like the way you delivered it, is it? Because if it had been right, you'd have looked like you really knew what you were talking about. And that's the... <laughs> but that's half the battle, isn't it, in mm -hmm. life? Mm. Mm. Rachel. So, I have to admit that I actually did history at university. Well, you so... didn't have to admit that. <laughs> I know. You've literally, just re you've literally just upped the pressure on yourself. I can't believe I that. But I didn't really do much of British kings and queens history. And I don't know whether to take a risk, because Paddy told me that I shouldn't take risks. Well, what does Paddy know? I mean, that yeah. is <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> so... If you take a risk, what's the worst that could happen? You're level with, with Reg and Eddie. OK, I'm going to go King Richard III. Richard III, says Rachel. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Richard III. You're level with Reg and Eddie. <laughs> I'm afraid, an incorrect answer. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 1483 to 1485, Richard III. It's going very well so far, isn't, isn't it? it? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he, um, he, he's the car park guy. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. the geezer. That's the, yeah. he's the, he invented car parks. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, and he, his dying wish was to be buried underneath a car park. Yeah. And then that is now, he's been now desecrated, which is a real shame. It's a great shame. Buried in Leicester Cathedral now. He's furious about it. Yeah, I bet. Oh, it's not even pay and display, Leicester Cathedral. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, Adam, uh, I think I'm going to go for... I think I'm going to go for King Edward VII. Edward VII says, Adam, let's see how many of our 100 said Edward VII. It's right. And down it goes to 25. Very well done indeed. Phew. Yeah, Phew. 1901 to 1910, Edward VII. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Well, well done, Adam. Lovely low score there. Everyone else on 100. Uh, we're coming back down the line now. Will the second place please step up to the podium? Lewis, you want to score 74 or less with this answer? Uh, I have to admit, history and, and kings and queens, not... It's a bit of a lottery, to be honest. Come up with a plausible-sounding king or queen Say it with great authority, and uh, we'll take it from there. I think I'm going to go for Queen Anne. Queen Anne. Let's see. Queen Anne, here's your red line. Can you get below this red line with Queen Anne? It's right. As you knew. And it goes down to 13. Very well done indeed. Taking your total up to 38. 1702 till 1714, and she was the last of the Stuarts up until Moira Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Paddy. Hi. Mm. I feel like the pressure's off a little bit. <laughs> um, well, it, it is. It's, it's, you and, it's you against Eddie. Eddie works in crypto security, so uh, <laughs> just... Uh... He does. Um, I mean, again, not subject to like particularly, um, but I will go with one that I think think is right or hope is right, and that's George the Sixth. George the Sixth, says Paddy. Let's see if it is right. Your joint high scorers at the moment, so there's no red line for you, but let's see how far down the column we get with George the Sixth. It's right. Down he goes to 34. Not bad. Takes your total up to 134. Very well played. Puts a lot of pressure on that last podium. Yeah, first name Albert, uh, known as Bertie, as so often in the royal family. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now then, Eddie, we have a moment of truth here. 33 or less gets you into the next round. I think I'm going to go for James the First. James the First, says Eddie. That's the kind of answer that will get you into the next round if it's right. Here's your red line. Can you get below that with James the First? I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Scores you 100.6, your total up to 200. You can tell they're brothers, though, because you did exactly the same thing. <laughs> like, absolutely delivered it as if I'm going, OK, yeah, great. James the first, yes, 1603 to 1625, I'm afraid. James the first, it's unlucky. Um, now, there's no point in this answer at all. The best, uh, you'll probably be good at this. 
Uh, Edward the Sixth. Uh, Edward the Sixth. Eight points. Ah. The best possible answer you could have given was William the Third, which would have scored you four points. Um, should we see what our own dear Queen scored? Seventy-five for Elizabeth the Second. Really? Yeah. <laughs> right. People, I... that's weird. Yeah, that you would, would hope, right? Well, maybe they didn't get down to the bottom. It took them a while to get down to the maybe. 20th century. Maybe. Um, do you think, because uh, the Queen watches Pointless, and we're very, uh, we're truly honoured that she does. Do you think she's sitting at home now, going, "I'm going to go for me"? <laughs> <laughs> you scored seventy-five. If you did, congratulations, yes, Mum. Congratulations, Mum. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, we have come to the end of our second round, as is traditional at the end of the second round. We send home our highest scorers, and on this occasion, Eddie and Reg are those highest scorers. So uh, we say goodbye to you now, Eddie and Reg. We'll see you next time. Um, better luck next time. You sounded great this round, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, very well done, Eddie and Reg. <laughs> right, for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Lewis and Adam, Paddy and Rachel. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £4,500. <laughs> but just for fun, before we play the head-to-head, -head, should we just see if we can find some pointless answers and swell that jackpot a tiny bit, just give it a little boost? Here's how it's going to go. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many trees as they could. Richard. Yeah, you know what happens in this bonus boost around? You see six names on the board. Two of them are pointless answers. If you get one of those, we're going to add £250 to the jackpot. Two of them, though, are incorrect answers put there to try and put you off. Uh, see if you can get one in the studio. See if you can get both of them at home. Thanks very much indeed. Nothing to lose here. Just a, a, a chance to swell the jackpot a bit. OK, let's reveal our trees. Six potential types of tree here. Purging buckthorn, white beam, kirk fir, white law pine, witch elm, Spindle. Two of those are incorrect, and of the four that are correct, two are pointless. Now, uh, Lewis and Adam, you can talk out loud because it's it's in everyone's interest to, to share uh, the information. Yeah, we don't we don't, don't really don't know. know. I, there's one that just seems familiar, which is which the, elm. Spindle seems familiar to me as well, but I, I might be. Let's yeah, go for that. which elm. Okay, which elm? Uh, let's see if that's pointless though. Uh, now, Paddy and Rachel, over to you. Don't go for one you've heard of, because that's unlikely to be yeah. pointless. So, Sorry, I, perhaps that's just a... So, Spindle, pretty sure, is a tree. Um, the others... I mean, they all sound like they could be trees, so... Purging Buckthorn? That's so... the one I'm leaning against. OK. And the one... Leaning like... against in a sort of... As yeah, in... <laughs> leaning against whilst thinking about which it's trees. Um, I liked White Beam. I don't know why, just... Just go for White Beam. Yeah, just a stab in the dark, really. White beam. White beam. Try white beam. Yep. Let's see if it's pointless. It's right. Oh, oh. Down to one. That's the other correct one. There we are. Well, never mind. Uh, nothing lost, uh, but nothing gained. Uh, yeah, you never know. It does mean there's two pointless answers still up there, though. What are you thinking at home? Our two pointless answers are, firstly, spindle. That's a pointless answer. And secondly, Paddy's leaning against it. It is a purging buckthorn. That's a pointless answer. Do you know why it's called a purging buckthorn? No. Uh, because it was used, the, uh, the, the, the fruit of that tree was used as a laxative. <sighs> That's there nice, isn't it? Nice. So that was why it was a purging buckthorn. Uh, and the other two there are incorrect answers, Kirkfer and White Law Pine. Is White Law Pine a jazz musician? Uh, no, White Law Pine, Chris, Chris Pine, the actor, his middle name is White Law. Oh. That's White Law Pine. And oh, Kirk fir, there's not a Kirk fir, but there is a Douglas fir. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we didn't find any pointless answers there, but it was fun. Uh, let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Here's the first question of the head-to-head. -head. It's all about famous Murrays. Richard. Uh, yeah, five pictures now of people whose surname is Murray. Can you tell us the first name they are most commonly known by, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five Murrays. Here they come. A. B. C. 
Sí. Sí. And E. There we are, five famous Murrays. Lewis and Adam, you're our golden couple, so feel free to confer. You're going first. Yeah, I think we're going to go for D, uh, which is Colin Murray. Colin Murray. Say Lewis and Adam Colin Murray. Now then, Rachel and Paddy, do you fancy talking us through the rest of that board? Half of it. So, now, uh, so A is my favourite sportsman. <laughs> Just put that out there. Andy Murray. Um, we, e... don't, we don't know B or C are off the top of our heads. D was the one we were going to go for as well. Um... Um, which leaves us with E, which is, we think, Bill Murray, and we'll go with E. I think A's too high. Yeah, E We'll go with E, Bill Murray. OK, Bill Murray. So we have Colin Murray and Bill Murray. Uh, Lewis and Adam have gone for Colin Murray for D. Let's see how many of our 100 said Colin Murray. Colin Murray is right. And down that goes to 16. Paddy and Rachel were left with Bill Murray, which is what they've gone for. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bill Murray. Yeah, there we are, 54, which means very well done. Lewis and Adam, after one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, well played. Kind of Murray up there. Uh, you're right about A is Andy Murray, a big scorer, though. He scores 89 points, proving he's 14 more famous than the Queen. <laughs> Uh, B, if, you, uh, if you're a Game of Thrones viewer, or even a Skins viewer, uh, you might have got Hannah Murray. She would have scored you nine, and sort of a clue as to what this gentleman does in the picture. He was the first ever editor of the Oxford uh, English Dictionary, and it's James Murray. And he was a pointless answer. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, here comes your second question. Paddy and Rachel, you have to win this one to stay in the game, so very good luck. Our second question is all about... Nautical terms, Richard. Uh, we're going to give you five definitions now from Oxford Dictionaries of nautical terms. We'll also show you alternate letters of the answers, but what are the answers, please? Thank you very much. Indeed, let's reveal our nautical term clues, and here they are. The side of a ship that is on the right when one is facing forwards, S-A-B-A-D, a, -A, a built-in housing for a ship's compass, B-N-A-L, the inward slope of the upper part of a boat's sides, T-M-L-H-M. A period of duty that lasts for two hours instead of the usual four, D-G-A-C. And a small window on the outside of a ship, P-R-H-L. I'll read those all again. The side of a ship that is on the right when one is facing forwards, S-A-B-A-D, a, a built-in housing for a ship's compass, B-N-A-L, the inward slope of the upper part of a boat's sides, T-M-L-H-M, a, a period of duty that lasts for two hours instead of the usual four, D-G-A-C, and a small window on the outside of a ship, P-R-H-L. There we go. Paddy and Rachel will go first. OK, we're going to go for a small window on the outside of a ship, which is a porthole. Porthole. So, Paddy and Rachel, now then, Lewis and Adam, over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? Uh, we only know the top one, uh, which we think is starboard. OK, starboard. We have porthole and starboard. Uh, Paddy and Rachel went for porthole. Let's see how many of our 100 people said porthole. Porthole is right. 85 for porthole. Meanwhile, Lewis and Adam have gone for starboard. The side of the ship is on the right, facing forwards. Let's see how many of our 100 said starboard. Starboard is right and wins you the point. Look at that. Down it goes to 73. <laughs> and it means, Lewis and Adam, after two questions, you're straight through to the final. 2-0. Well played, gents. Let's spin in these other three. The, uh, the three tougher ones are left. Do you know the period of duty? Dog watch. Dog watch, yep. Yeah. We'll just score 14. Do you know the built-in housing? Uh, binnacle is the... Binnacle, correct. That would have scored 13. Now, this one I didn't know. The inward slope of the upper part of a boat's sides. Never heard of this word before. Mm. Hard to 
fit anything in that, isn't it? Tumble home. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> but it also happens to be the correct answer. No. Yeah, tumble home. No. Yeah. That's hilarious. Three points. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? Never, ever, ever How in funny. my life before. How funny. Well done. Wow. Tumble home. Tumble home. Mm. Used to be your nickname. Didn't it? Of course. It's what your wife used to call you. Yeah. Something like that. A joke like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Paddy and Rachel, I'm afraid it's you. This is where we have to say goodbye to you, but only briefly. It is au revoir. We will see you again next time. Uh, and you've done very well, straight through to the head-to-head. -head. Uh, maybe you can take it one step further next time. Let's see. Anyway, meantime, thank you very much, Paddy and Rachel. But for Lewis and Adam, it is now time for our pointless fun. Congratulations, Lewis and Adam. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £4,500. <laughs> well, you've done very well. Your first appearance, your first answer on pointless, in fact, was a pointless answer. So uh, you have contributed to that jackpot. Um, we just need another pointless answer from you now, and you can take that jackpot home with you. What do you want to see come up? What would be good for you? Uh, anything popular music would be good for me. Yeah, maybe geography, football, you know, that for me. OK, well, as ever, four things will appear on the board. We just have to hope there's something up here you like the look of. Today's four are... The London Marathon, National Anthems, Shakespeare's Tragedies, British New Wave Films. Oh, definitely not the London Marathon or the National no. Anthems. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what British New Wave means. Shakespeare's Tragedies, I might have it, but... Might know some random cover. I don't. I don't even know very many characters. I think Maybe we have to. Might just have to go for films. Yeah, let's yeah. go for it. Just to, don't yeah. Know. I mean, okay. We don't know what it means, but British <laughs> New Wave films. British New Wave films. It is. Uh, well, the British New Wave. It's a cinema movement, late fifties, early sixties. Some amazing films. Three of them up here. We're looking for anyone, but you, they're still available. Um, look for anyone who starred in any of these, please. Uh, according to IMDb, anyone who appeared in Look Back in Anger. Anyone who appeared in A Kind of Loving or anyone who appeared in Billy Liar. Three amazing films there. Anyone, according to IMDb, credited with appearing in any of those three films. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. Just need one pointless answer to win the jackpot. Are you ready? Uh, sure. <laughs> OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, let's just come up with some what actors like? from, from that, uh, that like, day. Guinness. Don't yeah. know if he's old enough. Um, Sarah um, Temple. Shelly Temple. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Lawrence and Olivier. Doris <laughs> Day. But, uh, yeah, but then uh, we can't go American, can we? It's British. Oh, that's true. So it's got to be but, but I mean, Alec Guinness. Is Shelly Temple American? British? Mm, um, Brit um, American. American. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alex Guinness. Alec Guinness. Lawrence and Olivier. Um, Yeah. <laughs> I don't I know. Guess. I really don't know. James Watson. Any singing. Ten seconds people. left. Um, James Who's Watson. Who's that daunting? Guy first there. Yeah, I'm bad sure. OK, that, I'm afraid, is your time up. Let's have your three answers, I'm sorry. I mean, we've got Alec Guinness. <laughs> Alec Guinness, uh, a made-up name, which is James Wilson. James Wilson. Nice to hear. For which, uh, for which one? Oh, sorry, yes, I forgot to say Alec Guinness for which one? Um, let's go for the top one. OK, Alec Guinness for Look Back in Anger. James Wilson for the bottom one. James Wilson for Billy Liar. <laughs> and uh, the middle one? Uh, Stephen Greenwood. Stephen <laughs> Greenwood. OK, for a kind of loving. Now, of those three, which is your best <laughs> shot at a pointless answer? <laughs> Uh, shall we go Alec Guinness? And see Alec yeah, Guinness will put last. He does exist. Let's put him last. <laughs> um, and was Stephen Greenwood first? first? Yeah. And James Wilson in the middle. OK. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then. And here they are. We have got Stephen Greenwood, James Wilson, 
and Alec Guinness. Well, three answers there, you never know. One of those could turn out just miraculously to be uh, a pointless answer. What would you do? Um, apart from, obviously, faint. Um, <laughs> what would you do with your, uh, with your spoils, £4,500? Um, I'd probably put it towards a new instrument, maybe. That'd be nice. Nice Selma. Yeah. Is that what you go for? Yeah, Selma. Yeah, very nice. Um, Adam, how about you? Uh, I do work for a charity in Greece, uh, a refugee charity, so I'd probably try and put it towards something there or just money to spend time there and stuff. Very nice indeed. OK, well, best of luck. Three answers. Let's see if one of these can be pointless. Stephen Greenwood was your first answer. In this case, we were looking for any cast member from A Kind of Loving from 1962. If Stephen Greenwood's pointless, £4,500 is yours. Now, I'm afraid not Stephen Greenwood. So we now turn to James Wilson, the esteemed James Wilson. Uh, see if anyone mentioned him from the cast of Billy Liar. Let's see. For £4,500 if James Wilson is pointless. No, I'm afraid not right. So we turn to your third and final answer, Alec Guinness. We're looking for cast members now from Look Back in Anger. If Alec Guinness is pointless, £4,500 is yours. No, bad luck. Well, it's a clean sweep. <laughs> there we are. Well, any James Wilsons or Stephen Greenwoods out there would have enjoyed that, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all important. Well, correct answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot. Uh, but you do win today's trophies, so very well done for that. And you have played incredibly well across both shows, so plenty to be proud of. Anyway. Yeah, and we admire people who make up names. You made up better names than most people do. Stephen Greenwood and James Wilson, I thought, were both uh, good made-up names. Mm. This last one, Alec Guinness, to me, doesn't... Uh, come on, <laughs> I'm not buying that. Um, let's start with look back in anger. Um, a few answers up there. Tote Townley, uh, Emmerdale fans might remember. The, the big scorers there are Richard Burton, Claire Blue, Mary Year, uh, Donald Pleasance and Edith Evans. Uh, a kind of loving. There's a few answers up there. Pat Keane was in a famous episode of 40 Towers. Patsy Rowland, who um, Carry On fans will remember. Big scorers there, Adam Bates, uh, June Ritchie, James Bolam, Thora Heard and Leonard Rossiter. Uh, and finally, Billy Liar, a few names up there. Tom Courtney, the biggest scorer there. Judy Christie, Leonard Roster again. And we had James Bolam in the last one, and we got Rodney Buse in this one. They scored points. Uh, very well done if you've got any of the pointless answers. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thank you, Lewis and Adam. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £5,500. <laughs> Join us then, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.